I'm sorry, this was the biggest room we could get. There are also agendas where you sign in and paper and pencil. Do you want to make notes? We'll just start in a couple of minutes when everyone's signed in.
Carl? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to call this hearing to order. We have one member, Carl Midnight, that is participating in this meeting via remote access. All right. You want to, can you say hello, Carl? Hello. Okay. Hello, all right. Uh. <laughs> um, all right. I'm going to call the meeting to order. What is the official time? 7.07. All right. Um, welcome. There are um, agendas in the corner. There should be paper and pencil if you want to write any notes. Um, and there is, I think I've already said the sign up a number of times. Okay, we're going to start with the public notice. This is to serve as notice that the Reading Historical Commission, under the authority and requirements of Section 7.2, uh, historic demolition delay of the general bylaws of the town of Reading, Massachusetts shall hold a public hearing to, on the demolition of the structure included in the list of historic structures as defined in section 7.2.3 located at 186 Summer Avenue submitted by applicant Deborah Sean Stackpole. The public hearing will be held on Thursday, July 24th 2014 at 7 p.m. in the conference room at Reading Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street. Please direct public inquiry to Jesse Wilson, Community Development Administrator in the Community Development Office. Charlene Reynolds Santo, Chairperson of the Reading Historical Commission. Uh, welcome. Um, I am Charlene Reynolds Santo. I am the current chair of the Reading Historical Commission. In 1977, town meeting established the Reading Historical Commission and charged us with the mission to identify and record historic assets of the town and to develop and implement a program for their preservation. One of the means we have to follow this purpose is the demolition delay bylaw. We're here this evening in order to adhere to the town's charge and to uphold this bylaw. The purpose of the bylaw is to provide the Historical Commission with a tool to assist in its efforts to preserve the town's heritage and to protect historically significant structures within the town, which reflect or constitute distinctive features of architectural, cultural, economic, political, or social history of the town. The full context of the bylaw is available on the town's website. To respect the goal of upholding the town's charge, we will be following a set agenda and expect everyone to adhere to the following guidelines. Prior to addressing the chair, 
We'd like you to use the microphone. You can come up here or we can pass it around, whatever people feel more comfortable with. But this meeting is being recorded and that way it, the, what you have to say can be heard by everybody. When you come up, please state your name and your address. Please be respectful of everyone who is speaking. There are paper and pencils available if you want to make notes so that when it is your turn, you can voice your concerns and questions. I ask that everyone speak only once until all others have had the opportunity to speak. Um, I'd like to introduce the members of the board. I've introduced myself. It says, you go ahead. Hi, go ahead. <laughs> My name is Robin Parker. Sally Hilgendorf. Virginia Adams, associate. And we have two applicants here. I'm Jonathan Barnes. I'm Ron Weston. Okay. Now, I would like the owner and the um, applicant presentation. Okay. Oh, yes. Sorry, I just walked in, so I. Yeah. <laughs> and our, I thought it was Robert Littleton that was representing the owner. Yes, my name's John Fernandez. I'm an attorney. Okay. Uh, from Milford, uh, Massachusetts, is where my office is, and I represent the Criterion Child Care Development, which is Robert Littleton. Uh, okay. We're here with the architect, uh, Mr. Maxwell, and the engineer, um, and we're here to answer any questions, but. Yes, we, we Mr. Mr. Littleton's here, and, and Mr. Sullivan is prepared to offer you um, just a, an overview of the property, if you'd like that this evening. We, we would like a presentation. Okay, yes. the, um, what, I, what I would like to open with is we've had the opportunity to review your, your bylaw, and um, we're not here to present evidence that says that there should not be a delay, that, that there should be um, determined to be a property that should be allowed for demolition immediately. So we're prepared to work with the board, the Historical Commission, and the community over the next six months, mm -hmm. uh, anticipating that the board wouldn't pose a delay tonight. And we're okay with that. And we're prepared to work with that. So with that, I can just ask Mr. Sullivan to step forward, give you an overview, and then Mr. Littleton would like to talk a little bit about uh, his entity, the Criterion Child Care. Okay. Thank you. Okay? Thank you. For the record, my name is Jack Sullivan. I'm owner of the Sullivan Engineering Group. And this property in question is at 186 Summer Avenue. There's actually three parcels of land that um, encompass this property. There's, there's a vacant, uh, non-buildable lot on the right-hand side, which is 190 Summer Avenue. Out to the rear of the property, there's another non-buildable parcel of land. Um, we'll be looking to probably combine those three parcels into one at, at some point in time when we move forward with, with the design work on this project. Uh, for this site now, it's what Mr. Fernandez said is um, we, we know the main house is on your list of historic homes. Um, there is a barn as well that we put on the application for demolition. Um, there was some question if that was a protected carriage house um, or, or it is it, also in the inventory it is, it is still on the inventory property. so yeah. uh, specific to the demolition permit we we included both the primary structure and the barn um, for this application um, it should be noted this property just went into a purchase and sale uh, the end of <coughs> the end of june or very beginning of july um, at this time the design team uh, the, the architect in particular has gone through the main house, uh, measured a lot of the room. He, he's trying to decide how and if um, any portion of the existing house can be used in, in their design work as we move forward. Um, so the public knows, as the commission knows, uh, what, what will happen in the future is we're going to come up with design plans showing what we're proposing on the site. Uh, parking, drainage, uh, landscape buffers, all that there'll be a, a separate public hearing for with the Community uh, Planning Commission in this town. We're first going to go to a de development review team meeting with town staff. The town manager sits on, on the DRT, police chief, fire chief, the town planner, town engineer, all the main department heads within the town. We come in with basically a draft plan at that time and we try to get input from town staff. 
Then we'll submit a formal application. A butters will be noticed. A public hearing will be put in the. Uh, a public notice will be put in the newspaper, and there'll be a hearing in front of in front of the CPDC. So a lot of questions that might come up would be answered at that time. I wanted to be upfront that, and the reason I mentioned the purchase and sale, we're we're not too far along in any sort of design work at at this stage. Um, but we we did when they went into a purchase and sale. I've, I've worked in town for probably 20 years now. I, I know a lot of people on Summer Ave. And I said, I knew about the six month demolition delay. I've been involved in other projects in town that have historical significance. Some, we've been able to work with the commission. Some have been demolished, but details of the design have been included with the new structure. Um, I worked on um, off of Pier Street at, at the Oregon Pipe Place property. And uh, even though the building it had seen its day, um, but we try to incorporate a lot of the details. And if it turns out that we find the existing building, um, that we can't salvage any of it or it doesn't work with the design plans, I've already asked the architect, Mr. Littleton, and the design team that we would work with the commission to try to incorporate some of the details from the existing house into the new design. Um, and just we, we understand we're going to be under the full six month delay we're not looking for you to make a decision um, to say this is insignificant I don't ex I know this Commission I don't expect that to happen tonight we're not looking for that we'd like to move forward with you um, obviously we'd probably want to view the property see some some of the details if there's future um, hearings that are needed we'll gladly attend them uh, we just want to get in front of everyone tonight we know this is the first time any of the residents have been noticed publicly um, about this pro project in general. I know you don't know too much about it. That's why it's an overflow crowd tonight. Um, we're not, in, we're not going to hold anything back. Dr. Littleton will follow up my presentation, explain a little bit about what his company does, um, other towns that he's, he's uh, built in, that he's, um, he's, he's been active for a number of years, can give you some history on himself and, and, and what his, his business is. And we'd like to move forward from there, and we'll try to answer any questions we can. But I want to be upfront: we don't really have any full design plans at this time, uh, but we we do anticipate having design plans I over the next six to eight weeks. We'll be working diligently to get those plans put together. And I'll turn it over to Dr. Robert Littleton. Carl, can you hear okay? Carl. Yes, I can hear fine. Okay. Great. Madam Chair, I members of the muted, so you don't get disturbed by the goings on here. All right, that's <laughs> fine. I just wanted to check in. Thank you. I'm sorry. Go okay, ahead. No problem. Madam Chair, members of the Commission, thank you for allowing us this opportunity to speak to you this evening and the citizens of Reading. Can you speak up and slow Yeah, down? I can, absolutely. Uh, my name is Dr. Robert Littleton. I'm the founder and president of Criterion Child Enrichment. Uh, Criterion Child Enrichment is a, a provider of early education, early intervention services, and has been in your community for over 30, uh, well, we've been in business over 30 years. We've been in this community over 10, I think it is, Mary, is that correct? 15 years now. Um, during that time, uh, we've served approximately 6,000 uh, families uh, through, for, for the five-town area, which includes uh, Reading, North Reading, uh, Melrose, uh, Stoneham, and Wakefield. Um, we have uh, uh, citizens of your fine community who are among our staff. We have a program director who is from Reading. Um, and so I very much feel as though we are another of your public services. We are your fire department. We are your police department. We are your local service provider and only local service provider that serves uh, very young children under the age of three who have uh, developmental challenges or are at risk for developmental challenges. Uh, we're very proud of the work our staff has done over those years, and uh, we're looking to find a permanent home for our program. We have been in leased premises this entire time, and I've spent with uh, multiple parties over five years trying to find a location in, in this uh, greater five-town area, uh, and we most recently settled on uh, the location on Summer Street. Um, you know, I, I would like to say, first of all, we have a number of facilities statewide that are maintained in exemplary condition, and we have two other of those facilities which are embedded in uh, residential neighborhoods as well. Um, it's not uncommon uh, for these type of programs to be located in 
in the fabric of community. Um, Excuse me, Dr. Littleton, yes. could you just speak up a little sure. bit more? Thank you. It's it's for the yeah uh, it's for television. the recording. Oh, okay, very good. I'll just it, hold it. It's All right. not um, for here. Thank you. Uh, so you know we are, have a long-term commitment to this community, as evidenced by our past history and our future intentions. Um, our our real belief is that uh, we want to work, as said by earlier speakers, very closely with the members of the community to try and preserve as much of the historic structure as possible. Uh, we're mindful of the fact that these uh, properties in some cases have, have gone beyond the point of preservation uh, and, and others the, the costs are so prohibitive as to not be rational uh, in, in any really under any circumstance. Um, I don't know that that's the case in, in, the, in the current instance. Uh, we hope it's not. It, it would be our intention uh, to work uh, with the boards to try and preserve as much uh, of the building as possible. Be very candid with you. You know, it, it appears to us that the carriage house is is more in more desperate condition than is the main house. And and frankly, the main house has two additions that are, um, you know, recent additions in historic terms that are not of the same architecture nor of the same construction quality as the main uh, building. Um, all those things are really the limit of what we have uh, concluded at this point in our studies. We have a fine architect who will be working with us. Uh, we expect to hold a, a community meeting uh, on, on an informal basis just to talk to people about what their thoughts are and what we'd like to do and, and you know, how we can uh, appropriately provide uh, buffer and, and appropriate appearances. It's not our intention, I want to be very clear about this, about to throw up some ugly box that's not how we operate. Uh, we're one of the premier programs in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts of our type uh, statewide. Uh, we serve uh, over 5,000 families a year and, uh, and are, have always been uh, kind of an industry leader in, in, in our field. So, you know, I, I, may, I look forward to hearing the comments of the community tonight, uh, trying to um, adopt those to the degree possible and look forward to working with the commission, members of the community, media butters and so on uh, to see what we can do to preserve as much of the historic pro uh, structure as possible. Thank you. <laughs> Madam Chairwoman and members of the committee and community, that really concludes our presentation for tonight. As I said, we reviewed your bylaw. As Jack said, we recognize that the commission will likely find historic significance uh, relative to the particular property and it's our intention to work with you. We understand your hearing tonight has a very limited scope in terms of looking at that very question and that while there are many questions, we're certainly willing to try and entertain some at this time, um, but as we say, we're very early on in the design phase of this and the evaluative phase of this, so uh, we'll ha we're happy to do that, but we assure you there will be both the necessary formal meetings and informal meetings uh, with community leaders as well as um, uh, people who live in the neighborhood. So it's, it's the style of operation for this, um, this organization. Uh, the team's been together a long time in terms of people working on these kinds of projects. So we're, we're here to, uh, to make sure that what we do is consistent with uh, what, what will benefit the community. Madam Chair, can I hand out a brochure that describes the program? We can leave it at the door. Yeah, you can leave it at the door. Um, you, so you do not have a plan? We do not have a plan for at a replacement this at this point, no. Okay. No. Now, um, why did you want to apply now before you had a plan? And you're talking about um, trying to um, preserve some of the property. Because the initial evaluation would suggest that demolition of all or a part of the building is, is likely going to be required. Um, and 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 so but either for financial reasons or because of the condition of the building and the need for what the structure would have to accommodate in terms of facility um, on the site so knowing that and not wanting to head off in a direction that was insular to our own team we felt it important to to bring forward the permit um, request for demolition and begin the process of working with the community. Okay. All right. Thank you. 
Uh, ask a question. Well, we're going to get, we're going to have Excuse a point. <coughs> okay. Um, and I'm just curious why we're hearing from these gentlemen and not the owner. Right. The, this is the, the owner can choose to make her own presentation or to have representatives. And the owner has chosen to have the representatives make the presentation. And the attorney for the buyers? Yes. <clears throat> at this point, we're going to have an overview of the historic, if you're all set, yes. okay, of the historic and architectural significance of this property. And Virginia Adams will grace us with that. <laughs> Great, yeah. um, On the board, there are, uh, there is information, uh, the uh, inventory sheet, and I'll read a synopsis from those. Architecturally, uh, the house is very significant. This house and barn is of high style Italianate design built in 1853. It carries many features of the Italianate style with its elongated windows on the first floor and all windows are emphasized by shouldered architraves that are appropriately defined with contrasting color. The classic veranda exhibits pierced uh, Gothic columns and the cupola or belvedere uh, carries the same Gothic influence. A prominent exterior chimney is decorated with terracotta roses, rosettes, sorry. Paired brackets at the eaves and gables are the hallmark of the Italianate style. The side pergola is a later addition as it is the connecting unit to a modest two-story structure in the rear. The barn emulates the high style house with its own distinctive features. The center entrance is embellished with a central gable pavilion along with paired doors that have the same featured uh, of shouldered architrave as the house. A pair of semicircular windows complete the barn's distinctive <coughs> architecture. And the historical significance uh, um, reads, Several prominent families have lived under the slate roof of 186 Summer Ave. It was built for Robert Kemp after he bought land from his business part partner, John Mansfield. Mansfield built the house next door at 176 at about the same time. The two men commuted to Boston operating a boot and shoe in, uh, business and resided in Reading as neighbors. Robert Kemp formed an amateur touring musical uh, group named Father Kemp's Old Folks, and that took many Reading residents far from their hometown. The troop went to England in 1861. Kemp sold the house in 1868, moving back to Boston, but he returned to Reading and built a new home at number 199 10 years later. William Hawes was the next owner and he, like Kemp, was a Boston businessman who started a dollar store, which was the second one in the country. Now, I don't know whether that's the forerunner to our current day dollar <laughs> stores. I don't think so. Uh, by 1910, the property was in the hands of Dr. Herbert and doctors, Herbert and Emily Howard. They were both doctors. He was the director and supervisor of Massachusetts General Hospital. When he died, his widow offered the house to their son, Charles Howard, and she continued to live in the house with him and his wife, Catherine. Charles Howard's life was spent in public service. He was a state senator, treasurer of Middlesex County, and on several commissions. Locally, he served on the board of selectmen, the town moderator, and town council. His wife, Catherine Graham Howard, wrote a book entitled, With My Shoes Off, recounting her experience as secretary of the 1952 Republican National Convention. <coughs> Excuse me. Along with her role as Deputy Commissioner General to the Brussels International Exposition in 1958. <coughs> so the walls at 186 Summer Ave have seen a diversity of owners through the years and probably could tell us many stories if they could talk. Okay. All right. At this point, there's an opportunity for the public to address the board here. It is not a time for debate, and I ask everyone to um, use the microphone when you speak, state your name and address, and just when someone else is speaking, please give them the respect of listening, and you will have an opportunity. 
Uh, one thing I would like to do at the beginning of this is to read, not in their entirety, <coughs> but to um, <coughs> read the main points of some emails that have been received. Uh, most of these individuals were not able to come this evening, and they want their voices heard also. I will try to do this quickly so that all of you have the opportunity to voice your questions and concerns. Um, the first one I have, Margaret Nelson. She wants to voice her opposition and concern regarding the proposed development of the property at 186 Summer Ave. This historic street should be preserved and the building should echo that history. I am sure that there is a better option than building a 9,900 square foot child care facility with a parking lot in the middle of a beautiful historic neighborhood. Please consider delaying the permit for this development and make time and give time for other value, viable options that may be in keeping with the history of our colonial town. Kathy Greenfield, I trust the Historical Commission will be doing everything in their power to impose the delay and preserve the property. So it is not they who need convincing, rather it will be important for the current owner and developer to hear and understand the depths of the opposition. It may motivate them to seek alternatives during the six-month demolition delay. Mary Ellen O'Neill. Yes? Yeah, most everyone did. Kathy Greenfield, 192 Woburn Street. Margaret Nelson, 63 Edge. Mont Ave. Mary Ellen O'Neill, 125 Summer Ave. Um, I, I don't, I can't read all of them, but uh, while this material carefully documents all the reasons Criterion cannot use the existing building of on this site, it is, of course, does not mention the fact that the location it is so excited about sit smack dab in the middle of a long established neighborhood in our town. Google Maps aerial views of the 11 Criterion sites highlighted on Criterion's website indicate that none of the other sites is in such a location. Most are solely commercial districts and a few remain on the edge of residential commercial districts. There is no evidence that this company is coming into the neighborhood with goodwill by introducing themselves, explaining their programs, and expressing an interest in working to maintain the integrity of the neighborhood. This has all the markings of an unfriendly takeover with no respect for what already is and who already lives in the neighborhood. David Crew, hopefully I'm pronouncing his name properly, 3 Westcott Ave. I am writing to express my strong feelings against the proposal by Criterion Group to demolish the historic home at 186 Summer Ave, along with the adjacent property, and replace with a proposed building and parking lot for Criterion Child Education. Traffic and other issues aside, this proposal will negatively alter the character of one of Reading's most beautiful neighborhoods. Kathy Proctor, 186 Summer. I am against the demolition as well as the facility. Excuse me? Oh, oh, right. That's down the bottom. Sorry. <laughs> 30 Prospect Street, 186 is what we're talking about. Thank you. Um, I am against the demolition as well as the facility being proposed at this location. This is one of the most beautiful, if not the most beautiful, streets in Reading enjoyed by not only the surrounding neighbors, but many residents in our lovely town. There must be an alternative solution to putting this school parking lot in one-story structure. It really does not matter where you put the school, and most of the others from criter Criterion are in more industrial areas. It makes a difference to the neighborhood. Robert Kerwin, uh, 199 Summer. I am writing to ask for your support to work with our neighborhood to find alternatives to the demolition 
of 186 Summer Ave. Please let me know if, how you, we can help preserve the beauty of our street. Kelly and Robert Corwin. Okay. Uh, Bill Keating, 159 Haven Street. I am writing to let you know that I am against the proposed demolition of and construction of a private business on 186 Summer Ave. I can't imagine anyone in town would agree that the placement of this business in a historic residential neighborhood would benefit anyone but the business. Understanding the petitioning business has rights of their own, I am hopeful and confident that the leaders of the town government will collectively do what they can to preserve the home values, safety, and integrity of the town. Kelly Malone, 227 Woburn Street. I'm writing you today to urge you to consider other options to the proposed demolition and the proposed build of Criterion Child Care. I cannot express to you enough what a deleterious effect a building project of this nature and magnitude would have on not only the property values of the surrounding homes, but on the overall beautiful look and welcoming feel of the neighborhood. This facility would not bring economic prosperity to Reading, would increase traffic on a very busy intersection, would cause parking and traffic issues once the lot was full. Additionally, should this demolition occur, Reading would lose another very beautiful, iconic, one of the very few examples of Italianate architecture we possess. The home and carriage house reflect Reading's passage, past and its heritage can be traced back to the original owners of the home. I believe the dire home inspection has been exaggerated to facilitate the buyer's agenda. Catherine Carmody, 25 White Hill Lane. I would like to make it very clear that I am opposing this development, and as a taxpayer and a resident of Reading, I would like my opinion made known. Summer Ave is a beautiful historic street and neighborhood. This change would not only incur additional traffic and congestion, but spoil the character of our community. Betsy Floyd Henneberry, <coughs> Berkeley Street. Uh, unfortunately, we have already seen two large tracts of land subdivided on our Berkeley Street neighborhood. Uh, the property on the corner of Summer and King and the property at the corner of Prospect and King. This one block area now has four brand new houses. It is disheartening to see the increased density of these large homes squeezed into small lots. 186 at Summer Ave is by far the most grand and oppressive of the many historic homes on Summer Ave, and one that many, many residents pass by daily. Its demolition would significantly change the character of the neighborhood and surrounding properties. While I realize the property owners have a right to do what they want, the demolition of a magnificent historic property is a crime. It erases the history of the town that can never be gained back. Deborah Braschetti, 6 Emerald Drive. What a sin it would be to allow the demolition of this beautiful historic home and to allow Criterion Child Enrichment, Inc. to open a business, nonprofit or not, in a clearly historic residential area. We have seen this happen over and over again. I implore on the board to use whatever legal avenues it can to block this project. Reading needs to take a stand. No. Well, I, I think there was about 12. But um, Steve and Rosemary Adams of Reading oppose the development. 
Demetra and Salvatore Restuccia, 106 Oak Street. I apologize for names I'm butchering. Um, right to formalize their opposition to the proposed demolition of the um, of 186 Summer. It's a beautiful historic part of Reading to allow the demolition of one of its most beautiful buildings to make way for a business is terrible for the immediate neighborhood and Reading. Keeping Reading financially strong is vitally important. A facility such as this one proposed would hurt property values in the neighborhood, increase traffic to an area already stressed by the church and school driving needs, by the church and school's driving needs, and irrevocably harm the beauty of Reading and its reputation as a community that values its history. Uh, Michael Gray also writes, uh, he lives at 146 Summer Ave in the uh, home known as Wisteria Lodge. Let's see if I can summarize what I already summarized. Um, uh, all right, he recalls looking at, when he was looking at his house, there were several potential buyers interested, including a Montessori school, a builder who wanted to convert to condos, etc. All were thinking about demolishing this house. He is happy to say that he bought the house in time to save it and has been busy restoring and improving this house since. He understands the value of historic homes, not just for resale, but for the contribution to the surrounding community. However, he says, I'm a real realist and I understand money often is a bottom line. I am sure the owners of 186 got a great offer for this property, but I wonder if they really investigated their options or at least got other options. One factor that allowed them to purchase Wisteria Lodge was the ability of the seller to subdivide and sell adjoining lot. Um, this allowed the house price to fit the buyer's budget and they were able to purchase and make their home there. Uh, not many barns continue to survive today and it's amazing intact example. A large open space in the front gives relief to the streetscape of Summer Street and one of the most aesthetically pleasing stretches of road. Um, it will also cause detrimental effects including lowering property values, increasing traffic and congestion, noise, institutional commercial lighting, fencing, providing a place for loitering, etc. This intervention center might be a nice place, but please, just not in this location. Um, Karen Gately Herrick, 99 Washington Street, I believe. Um, she strongly supports full use of the demolition delay. Uh, she, believe, she doesn't believe for a minute that the neighbors will allow ZBA to approve the school after just rejecting the St. Agnes project because of increased traffic. And there is another one from Cindy Romer. And I don't have an address. It, it, it's a few paragraphs long. And I guess I didn't highlight this one to um, abbreviate it. <coughs> but let's see. She, um, I urge anyone who cares about preserving the history of Reading and the beauty of um, Summer Ave to attend this meeting. So I'm prop. I, um, I'm just, it, she would like to preserve the building also. I just, I don't want to read the whole thing to you. That's, all right. I would like to open it up for the public. Um, would you like to come up to the microphone or should we hand the microphone around? I'll walk up. All right. <coughs> Thank you for putting up with that, my, all my reading. Uh, Bob Quinn. I believe I'm so. In circle. Okay. Uh, Madam Chairperson, I would like that last email read into the record in its entirety, please. All right. Point of order question. I, I'm going to take you. Yes. A question, please. <coughs> Was that email sent directly to the historical commission? 
They were, most of them were sent to the, um, so the town manager, Bob LaLachere. And was they were- that particular email that you're referencing sent to the selectmen and to the town manager? Um, no, it was not. That was a private email. Okay, then I will not read it. Thank you. I should have read the whole thing before and then I would have seen that. Thank you. I apologize. Thank you, Madam Chairman. All right. I believe because it was quoted, at least partially, it now becomes part of the public record. So I, re I repeat my request. For what reason? Yeah. I think it would be instructive for the uh, people present. Okay. Madam Chairwoman, could we hear from the people present before we yeah. address the emails? <coughs> That's fine. All right. Um, in, in the someone in the back had their hand up next. Jessica Doherty. I live at 119 Salem Street. My maiden name is Sean Stackpole. The current owner of the house is my mother. Um, I'm going to address some of the concerns that were brought up in the emails that you just read. Uh, first being the concern over a school being in a residential neighborhood. There are many schools in residential neighborhoods. In fact, almost every school that you see is in a residential neighborhood because that's where the children are. There is a school already on Summer Ave, Joshua Eaton. There is a nursery school, well, technically not on Summer Ave, but on the corner, Sawyer. Uh, there was recently an addition put onto the church that's on the corner with a lovely parking lot and a beautiful building. And it didn't affect the town or the neighborhood or deter people from wanting to buy in, on our beautiful street. Uh, we've just heard assurances from the potential buyers uh, to the fact that they are going to work very hard to preserve the home um, and preserve the property and make it fit into the neighborhood as best they can. Um, and obviously, my mother loves that home. She purchased it 30 years ago when I was two years old and has worked her entire life, her entire 30 years there, to turn it into what it is, the, the, the home that everybody is here to try to preserve. Um, she's the one that's made it such a beautiful place to drive by and admire. And as far as the subdividing um, that the man who lives in Wisteria House mentioned, my mother did try to subdivide. Uh, when she purchased the home, she divided the lot into three <coughs> separate spaces, one of them buildable. The town allowed it. When they repaved the street, they put in curb cuts, <laughs> plumbing, sewer, everything. Uh, because it was a buildable lot, my mother paid taxes on that lot for 30 years. The town collected them and accepted them. Excuse me. Would you mind addressing me? Oh, sure. Okay. Thank you. Um, and when she had a buyer for the lot, uh, the town said it wasn't buildable. And she went through a legal battle with the town to try to resolve it and lost. So that is not an option, um, unfortunately, because the town prevented um, the purchase of the lot for construction. Um, and as far as you know, the community and the change in the neighborhood goes, there's always change. Things always happen. Um, unfortunately, when you purchase a home, you can't guarantee what's going to happen to the home next to you. That's sort of a, a lottery that you play um, when you purchase a home. And I understand people's concerns about their home values and people's concerns about preserving the home. Um, and to answer one of the questions, I don't remember who posed it, about whether or not other offers were even heard, there were some others. Um, and obviously, my mother would not have taken to selling the home to someone who wanted to just destroy it easily. Um, and as you've heard now, she took an offer on the assumption and the knowledge that they were going to do the best they could to <coughs> preserve the home and preserve the neighborhood and make it fit in as best it could. The other thing that I would like to note is that um, the owner of Criterion Child mentioned that they have been leasing space in the neighborhood and in the community all this time. So the comments about what the space looked like and the fact that it was in an industrial area was because you can't lease private homes for a school. So he's looking to build a school that will blend into the neighborhood and become part of the community because it serves the community. It serves people's children who need help. And you know, 
maybe your children are older, maybe your children don't need help, but maybe someone nearby is children do. do. Maybe those children need the help and they don't want to drive <coughs> far away to get it. And those children will benefit and therefore the town will benefit. Okay, <coughs> thank you. Sir? Hi, I'm Bob Connors. I live at 107 Howard Street in Reading and I'm also a town meeting member representing Precinct mm -hmm. 4. Gentlemen, this is a bad idea and this is why this is a bad idea. You have, we have, this house is one of a kind. There's none other like it in Reading. There's probably in all of Middlesex County, you could count the number on your hand, on one hand, and have fingers left over. So I understand the financial background and what's going on financially, and I understand the doctors need to have a place for <coughs> young children. Uh, early childhood development is critical. But if you want to endear yourself to the community, the best thing I think to do is to put this house on the open market. If you put this house on the open market, just like other homes on Summer Ave, you'll get people who love older homes and are willing to invest the time and money to repair and restore this house. Then with the profit from that, you could find other pieces of property in Reading. In fact, there's one on Woburn Street. There's the old St. Agnes School right on Woburn Street that you could then take over. There's all sorts of other alternatives here. There's all sorts of other pieces of property in Reading that you can buy and endear yourself to the community instead of sort of rubbing everyone the wrong way by saying, you know, we've got this underhanded sort of behind the back door deal on this property on Summer Ave, so we're going to just knock down this one-of-a-kind house and build a school here. That, that's going to rub people the wrong way and probably rub them the wrong way for a long time. I think, like I said, if you put this piece of property on the open market, you could sell it, most likely make a profit, and then find a better spot to put the school. Thank you. Sir? My name's David O'Connor of uh, 210 uh, Summer Ave in Reading. I'm probably the newest resident on the street. We bought our house exactly one year ago last week. Um, not to counter anyone's argument, but schools are in neighborhoods. And I would defy anybody to be able to back out of my driveway at 7.30 in the morning at the intersection of 210 <laughs> Summer Street, Summer Ave and Temple Street because you cannot get off my street because of the parking and the congestion because of the schools and the school across the street. <clears throat> schools are in neighborhoods. We love to have them. One of the reasons we bought our house where it is and paid a uh, handsome price for it is because of exactly what it is and what the street offered. Um, it is ridiculous to think that you could put any type of a business in that area. You cannot park on Summer Ave during rush hour and have any cars get down the street without someone getting injured, which is why there are crossing guards sequentially going down the street on Summer Avenue, Temple, and Woburn. I was gone from Massachusetts for 27 years. It was our goal to come back. We searched for nearly a year to find the right house. Had I known something like this was going on, although we love the neighborhood, I never would have bought the house. However, we didn't know anything like this was going on. As the gentleman just commented, you know what? This was a try to fool me overnight, and it wasn't done appropriately. Just my two cents worth. Thank you for your Thank time. Thank you. Sir, in the back. Hi, my name is uh, Keith Arnold. I live at uh, 3 Bond Street, and I want to voice my opposition to the school. Um, the, the proponents came in here not really having anything to show. They're just saying, we're going to build here. Now, I'm an engineer, and when this happens, they usually have a basic set of plans, and they have a rendering and stuff like that to, to show. None of that was done here. So I'm, in the back of my head, I'm thinking something's not quite right here. Um, the other thing is, is that there's no mention of traffic. How, how is this going to add to Summer Street? I mean, if anybody that lives in that neighborhood on Sunday during church go down Summer Street, you can't, you can't get down there. It is very tough. So there's no mention of traffic. Not to mention, this is a beautiful residential area. It's beautiful. Me and my son, we walk it almost every day. To have a commercial building come into that neighborhood 
would destroy it would destroy Summer App. It really would. You know, and I mean, I'm not a gambling man, but I bought in a residential area thinking my neighbors were going to keep it residential. I guess that's my, my two cents. Thank you. Thanks. Sir. Uh, my name's Charles Murillo. Uh, my folks live at uh, 159 Summer Avenue. That's where I grew up. We moved there in 1957. Summer Avenue is a, it's a lovely street. Reading's a lovely place. It's lost a lot of places in my time. I've lived in Britain for the last 40 odd years. I've come back particularly because I knew the Howard House. We used to visit the Howard House. There's another element about the Howard House. It had the first shower in London, <laughs> a shower room. If you were 10 years old, you'd go there just to see the shower. <laughs> That whole building or non-building plots, I remember the brouhaha about taking down Reading Inn a long time ago. And that's, you know, it was a, Reading doesn't have that much. It does have certain sections and it has to protect them. I don't understand the business proposition. I've not heard it explained. I don't know what other precedents there are for houses like this to go. Certainly the significance of it is without doubt. But I don't see the business objective. Why there? There's certainly many places in Reading that would be far more suitable, far more practical, far more businesslike. To destroy that area, it's just daft. Thank okay. you, sir. Yes, all right, I'll let this gentleman and then you, sir. Uh, John Freitas, 70 Howard Street. Thank you, Thank Madam you. Chairman. I really, a couple of things. My wife grew up in the neighborhood. I grew up in the neighborhood. My daughters live there. This is craziness, absolute craziness. And I think it's very disingenuous for anybody to think that an opposition to this is against children. That's craziness. You, there's all other options in this town. Why in the middle of a residential neighborhood? It makes no sense whatsoever, none. Thank you. Sir? Madam Chair, my name is John Weigel. I live at 12 Pratt Street in one of the Wadland houses. Uh, I lived there for 21 years. I'm mm -hmm. also an architect. I'm also a developer. I've happened to develop many historic properties all over New England. Um, you, the commission probably knows and probably many citizens know that a few years ago, Summer Avenue was deemed to be one of the most beautiful residential streets in the country. Mm -hmm. Not in Reading, not in Massachusetts, not in New England, but in the country. That character, I believe, is going to be severely damaged if we let this building be taken down. I do have a question if I'm allowed to ask the proponents of the demolition. You can voice it and they can respond. You later. mentioned you have a right. purchase and sale agreement. Is it contingent? Well, why isn't it? All right, Let's, this isn't a time for discussion. <laughs> Then if I, could, right. if I could summarize, I think that clearly the support I believe here is for the delay. I would also comment to the people here, there are other avenues for delaying or stopping this project. I would certainly look to the Zoning Board of Appeals, the definition of a, of a single family zone, the definition of a school in a single family zone. I think we have a lot of other tools we could bring to bear on this. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Yeah. Hi, my name is uh, Jim Cabley. Uh, 152 Summer Ave. And, you know, I think it's pretty obvious, you know, if, if you're into sports and you're keeping score, um, you know, the score is pretty low for the people that are for this project and the score is pretty high for the, for the people that are against, um, you know, this project. I guess my question uh, to you is, um, you know, we're talking about, uh, you know, voting, um, you know, possibly to issue a six month delay but what I would propose is that we really continue the public hearing process because that's exactly what these people want to do is they want to start the clock right now so they can put up whatever building that they have in mind and the fact that they don't even have plans to show us any sort of architectural plans, any sort of details on the project to share with the committee, um, to me that's just ludicrous. And that, you know I've never seen that from the business <laughs> sense where somebody comes in and says they're going to construct a building and they don't even share the plans with you. So, 
our bylaw is set that if we continue the delay, we have to close it within 21 days. Okay. Excuse me, explain that. In the, in the bylaw, which is available on the uh, town's webpage, if the commission chooses, uh, decides that we have insufficient <coughs> evidence to make a decision, we can continue it, but we must close it within 21 days. After the six month period, is there an extension? No. So that's. So we're not addressing the planning approval or anything else. It's just the significance of the house. We are here to uphold the demolition delay bylaw. You wanted to speak? Thank you. Hi, Sarah McLaughlin, 55 Temple Street. Uh, I have a couple comments and then a couple questions I'd like to put uh, before the proposed uh, buyers. So uh, our property does abut the 186, um, the undeveloped part of it, the wooded lot. <laughs> so I think we have particular interest in what the plans will be for that, given how that will impact our property values on that stretch of Temple Street. Um, so not only would we lose a significant property, potentially, it would, it would irrevent. You change the character of the neighborhood, which is a, a huge concern, as many people have already voiced. Um, I would like to ask, uh, has it been said, do we know that this is a school or is it a place where they provide services? Does it have set hours with people be coming and going? So what is the character of the actual build, of the actual uh, business? And if a, pr a traffic study has not been done, I'd like to request that we do one. You know, as people have stated before, the reason that the Woburn Street School fell through was mostly because of the traffic study and the impact that would have on a very busy neighborhood already. Mm -hmm. Would, would you come up to the microphone, Temple? please? 61 Temple Street. My, my name is Patricia Carr. I am three doors away from the junior high school. If I want to go out on a given day, the school is in. I have to get the hell out my door by 20 minutes of three. There are, I can't even move. And what they're talking about is our backyard, that whole property is behind us. And we are dead set against this. Just want to say so. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else? Yeah. Yes, sir. I'm uh, Charles Seabor from 14 Dudley Street. I've been reading about Dr. Littleton, 30 year history, winning an award recently for education. After 30 years, what you're doing here, I think, or I would address you, say, that should pass on to him, that what you're doing is going to become part of your legacy. It's, it's going to be a footnote, and it's probably not going to be. It's just an 11th or 12th school, and it's going to be ripping down a historical building. Just think about it. Sir? Madam Chairperson, I'm Bill Melly, 29 Prospect Street. I just want to let you know that I'm opposed to it. Uh, one question I have for you, though, is we were supposed to hear from the owner tonight. And as they've said, they're the current owner. And there has been no one representing the current owner. It's been a purchase and sale from these gentlemen here. So I don't think there's been, the agenda has been observed. And I think we need to. The owner has chosen to have her legal representative come. And in the um, application. Is that legal representative here yes. in the room today? And there is paperwork in the um, application okay. that says that Robert Littleton okay. is her representative. And so she has chosen Does the attorney that route. represent the buyer and the seller? That's a conflict of interest. I, so, I, sir, do you represent the seller? Let's I, I do not. You okay. Do not. So the owner is not represented. So the owner is not the, I have paperwork that states, let me pull it out. Um, as owner of the subject property, I uh, hereby authorize Robert Littleton, Jr. to act on my behalf in all manners relative to work authorized by this building permit application. Deborah A. Shant Stockpole, 626-14. Could we ask if you just told me you don't represent If, if you would yeah. please. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm a little confused. Your last statement was that you do not represent the owner. Who do you represent here? Criteria. Uh, this is a direct question. Who does he represent? The application is for the demolition permit. Yeah, but and who they're is both who? together wishing to demolish this. Okay, so who is he representing? 
Is he representing both parties? On the demolition permit, he can represent her. That and who's representing Criterion? I just read. And who's representing Criterion? Right. Who is representing Criterion here then? Yeah. Ma'am? Yeah. 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 Deborah, is there anything that you would like to add to this? <coughs> would that help at all? Uh, Dr. Robert Littleton is representing me. Um, I have nothing further to say, but okay. I found it was interesting that uh, petitions, et cetera, were going around before. Excuse me, she Nobody said she had nothing further to say. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, please, <laughs> let's That's listen to everyone. Uh, nobody ever came to ask me anything. They just started going out with negative. And I don't have to disclose my purchase and sale agreement to you or anybody else in this room. It's a mm -hmm. private matter. I don't have the right to go into your house and ask you any questions. I didn't ask okay. you that. All right, I hold on, hold on. Let's, this is not a time for debating. Are, do you, are you done? No. Then I, I can let her come up. Okay, my just one last question. Yes. Who is here representing Criterion then? Sorry to explain to you, sir. That is, Then yes. who would then simply, I'm a little on the dull side, so just repeat this. Who is representing Criterion here? I, I have a demolition permit. Yeah. And on this demolition permit, this is the information that I have from the town. Yep. He is representing her. She is authorized by this building permit for all matters relative to that. That is the legal document that I have with the application. Okay, like, okay. but my question was not answered. I asked simply who's representing the Criterion Corporation. Yes. All the people that spoke in the beginning that are standing right over there. All right. Mr. Lewis you said he represented your mother. All right. Um, Deborah, would you like to come up and, and clarify things speaking with us? <coughs> no? No. All right. No, my representative, Dr. Littleton, is here, and I think he's answered most of his questions. If you have anything further, please submit them at the next meeting. I'm sure we will go on to the 21st, 21 days, and he will be able to present plans to whoever wants to show up at that point. <coughs> Yes, ma'am, would you like to come up? Uh, my name is Ann Godwin. I live at 189 Summer Ave. And I have a couple of thoughts, so forgive me if I'm jumping around. Um, I oppose this demolition of this home. Um, this is about saving our history. Um, and <coughs> all the other things, demolishing this house um, will bring the traffic and devaluing home values. But primarily, this is an iconic home. This is our town. This is what makes New England special. And I, this house was never put on the open market. Um, it was kind of, I think, I don't know who approached Criterion to make this um, known that this lot was available. And I think that it's probably going to go for a higher price going to a company as opposed to a private sale. I don't know that. But um, in looking at the documents that were submitted to Town Hall by Deborah Stackpole. Um, the, um, there's a, a request to de completely demolish um, the home and the barn. It makes no mention of um, trying to save um, architectural components. Um, and my question is, in the purchase and sale, is it, um, does it give them permission to completely demolish 100% the home and the barn? And when you look at those documents, it kind of looks like that. Um, and they're saying, well, we're going to try to try to incorporate. But if it's on paper that they can demolish that complete home, then they can do that. Um, the other thing, uh, I'm sorry, I'm upset. I'm losing my train of thought. Um, if this house did go on um, public market, there's somebody that's probably going to love an old house and restore it. Um, and I just find it incredibly um, damaging to the town. We get to teach our children about history. You're going to knock down, this is history. And um, I'm all for, you know, trying to support you and finding another property for your school. But I just think that this is in not the best interest. And I think that um, I understand that the owner has their own personal financial situation, but I think that it's taking away from all of our lives and our children and our town to do this. And I think there is a plan submitted online to Town Hall for a 10,000 square foot, one st um, structured, one floor building, 
a 2,400 um, square foot playground, a 20 um, space parking lot. And um, if you look at the other properties that Criterion, I don't know if you lease all of your properties, they're horrible looking. There's a package that's being passed around. They look like boxes. And that's why there's no plans tonight um, about how you, it's like, oh, we will present this, but we're going to start tonight, six months from tonight, that this demolition um, delay will be up and they can knock that house down. So I encourage you to go online and look at the documents that were submitted. And, um, and I don't think you're being forthcoming with what your plans are. And if it's on paper that you can demolish that, you're going to do what you want. Have you actually walked, I, I have to, you know, Please. walk to that property Thank or you. walk to that street? Thank you. understand more. Appreciate it. Thank you. It does, it, you've, you've been up, so I'd like to see if yeah, there's anyone else. else. Thank you. <laughs> Linda Smith, 12 Pratt Street, and this is a question to you. Okay. Houses listed on the National Register, does that yes. in any way um, create another layer that they have to go through? It does not create a, an additional layer. It just shows the significance of this property. It's not easy to get on the National Register. Hi, David Godwin, also from 189 Summer Avenue. Uh, does anyone have the piece of paper that went around with the PowerPoint presentation of the properties? Great, thank you. I can send this to you electronically as well. I'd like to submit this. This is some of the pictures of the 11 properties that uh, Dr. Littleton said were his and that uh, two were in residential areas. They really don't compare to uh, Summer Avenue. I'd just like to submit this. I think most people here have seen uh, the properties there are pretty dismal, and I would say it's disingenuous to think that any of these match uh, anything that would look like uh, would sit on Summer app. Thank you. Sir, could I have your name again so I know who submitted this? David Godwin, G-O-D. I like to pause there. <laughs> uh, W-I-N. Great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That, that's a tough act to follow. <laughs> uh, my name is Paul Flynn. I live at 112 Mineral Street. And I'm just here to say that I oppose the demolition. Um, I oppose the proposed usage. Um, I do not understand the business case, as someone else has mentioned, or the requirements. And I know for certain that no one has asked me what my requirements are for the neighborhood or anybody else. So I don't understand the business case and why this particular location. Uh, I too, and I don't understand why we denied St. Agnes the right to use that uh, gymnastic place for a school because of traffic, and we're, worried, and we're not worried about this location. Certainly, if it doesn't fit for St. Agnes, it doesn't fit for Summer Ave either. Um, someone else said they're not a gambling man. I, too, am not a gambling man. I didn't understand. I didn't realize that when I bought a house, I was playing the lottery. Uh, that's not what I looked at when I bought my house at 112 Mineral some 20 years ago. I thought I was coming into a well-established neighborhood with a town government that was going to protect our rights. And that's what I hope you do tonight. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? Please. Hello, my name is Julie Jeffrey, and I'm here for my parents, Dr. and Mrs. Russell Jeffrey, who live at 181 Summer Avenue. Also grew up on Summer Avenue. Um, <coughs> born and raised in Reading, and now I'm beginning my 12th year as a teacher in Reading Public Schools. I'm a school psychologist district-wide. I'm here because my family is opposing the demolition and also, also to voice concern about the demolition. I also think, and your point was right, that we're kind of loosely referring to this as a school, and I urge you to consider that it's, it's not a school in the typical sense. With all due respect to Criterion Child Enrichment, it's not a typical school in the sense of Joshua Eaton or Wood End or all of the neighborhood schools. All Please right. keep that in mind. Thank you. <coughs> Is there anyone else? Kathy? Um, Kathy Greenfield, 192 Woburn Street. Um, I made a few notes, and you'll have to forgive me because I made a mess. Um, I have some comments on some of the things that were said and um, to Criterion directly. Um, having seen your other properties, I can't imagine what on earth caused you to consider the property in the middle of a beautiful and historic neighborhood. Um, it's, it's beyond me. 
um, and I would implore you to look around and we'll help you. That will be part of the, you know, what I hope that everyone in this room will do during the next six months. Um, there are other places and I, I, it's beyond me why you would even look there. Um, to Ms. Doherty's comments that the lot can't be subdivided, I, whenever that um, process was gone through with ZBA or CP, it was ZBA, um, the, the building wasn't in threat of demolition at that time. And it's possible that you could seek to um, subdivide again and keep the house and still build another house on the property. I'm not saying that's the solution. I'm just saying that now would be, that would be something else that could be explored during the delay. Are we allowed to respond? Nope. Um, <laughs> to um, Mr. Sullivan's contention that they'll seek to determine how much, if any, of the building can be reused, um, I would contend as a historic homeowner that it could all be reused because anything is possible. Um, it costs money, and the engineering needs to be done, and things will need to be fixed, but um, I, I think that it can all be done. And Mr. Weigel posed the question asking if the sale was contingent, and Ms. Sean Stackpole does not think that that's any of anybody's business, and I think it's everybody's business, because we're here to try and seek alternatives over the next six months, and if nobody knows what the deal is with the, you know, if they're in it or if they're not in it, contingent on, on um, this going through, it makes a big deal of difference. Um, the crux of the demolition delay and the spirit of the demolition delay is to work to find alternatives. And um, I want to know who's going to have the responsibility in the next six months to work with the commission to seek alter alternatives. Because um, in a best case scenario, finding another buyer um, to preserve the property is going to be the best alternative. Um, and right now I'm skeptical at best that there's a genuine effort to find alternatives um, from either the current owner or the potential owner. Um, and I just find it really disappointing that there's a, such a lack of appreciation on the part of the current owner uh, for the responsibility that goes with owning an historic property. This room is full of people who own historic properties in that neighborhood and who love them and pu put their blood, sweat, and tears into their properties to maintain them, something that you're saying in your report that it hasn't been maintained. And, and I just think that that's um, unconscionable. And it's the reason it's in disrepair. That's all. Thank you. Sir? Uh, Dennis Carr, 61, uh, 61 Temple Street. Did you receive a report on the condition of the property? Yes, that was part of the application. Was, that, was there any indication of structural problems with that house? Um, as I recall, there was nothing absolutely in poor condition. There was a lot of things that needed repair, but I'm just thumbing through it quickly. Um, there was nothing that was poor. Except a waste vent? Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, for the record, I'm just against the, uh, the demolition, but I, um, the representatives were saying that it was, uh, they had computations which show that it was uh, not beyond repair. I just want to clarify that you had received that report. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I just have a question. Do you have the power, does the commission have the power to stop demolition? No, we, to, uh, we have the power to uphold the bylaw, and that can delay the demolition for up to six months. And 21 days. Well, and, and 20 six 20 months 20 after 20. the hearing has been closed. Who can stop the demolition? Yes. There are other boards. What board? That they would have to go through. I, I, there are zoning issues. There, are, I, I, I'm not sure all. I know for sure there's zoning issues. So. For the purpose of this meeting, we take the six months and try something else. Mm -hmm. Yes. That is all the power that we have. Okay. No, I think you just said the six months means they can do what they want in six months, mm -hmm. planning to get approval for everyone else. All we can do is delay the demolition for <coughs> up to six, six months. Six months, that's it. So yes. this is just the first step. Mm -hmm. uh, Our sir, the board, is the ZBA and CPTC. This project has to go through the town. Jerry Lamb, 194 Summer Ave. I mean, Kathy alluded to it. Can you explain, like, uh, the six-month hold, 
is going to go into effect, obviously. What is the next step? Like, who negotiates with, with the owners to try to come up with a better resolution? <clears throat> the Historical Commission and the owners and or their representatives get together and try to work out. Okay. And they have to be engaged. They could just not engage and then six months just goes by? That is a possibility. Okay. Thank you. So if I just answer my question, there's no legal um, action that we can take as a town preserving this historical property because it's privately owned. And I can only speak for the demolition delay bylaw. Sorry, I didn't look over there. No, that's okay. Again, suffice the council. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, it's our full intention, I say for the public record, to meet with this board to try and do what we can to preserve as much of the building as possible. I said it's, you know, it is our intention, I say this publicly, uh, to try and preserve as much of the building as possible, as practical, and do that uh, jointly with this commission. Now, um, I'm, if anyone else has anything else that they would like to, yes, sir. I'm glad you're tall. I can see that arm. Sorry, that's fine. Don't shoot me. I read the emails. I read the blogs. I don't. I'm not for or against. Oh, my name is Keith Goodwin. I live on the other side of the tracks, over on Charles Street. I deal with the Killam Street Killam uh, school traffic every morning. Uh, and I don't think it's the traffic. I think it's the drivers. Um, I read it. I'm just here to support Debbie. That's all. Thank you. Are there any other comments or questions? Comment. I've been up there already. But this is nothing against Debbie Stackpole. You know, she's a realtor. You know, this is not it. This is the rest of our property. And I hope the board considers the devaluation of the rest of our property in their decision. I know it's only a demolition uh, permit, but th this affects a lot of people. And it's nothing against Debbie. She has the, every right to do what she wants. But we have every right to voice our uh, opposition as well. Yes, you do. Mary Ellen. Mary Ellen O'Neill, um, 125 Summer Avenue. I, I do want to point out to the audience that in the documentation provided by Criterion's architect, they state that um, uh, we request permission to demolish the existing structures. And once granted, we will prepare conceptual plans for the Criterion Early Intervention Program facility we intend to construct on the property. They are clear in the documentation that they want a one-level building to be handicapped accessible. Um, so I think you know, may, you, you might be saying one thing tonight, but this is what is in the, you know, what is in writing with the application. Um, <clears throat> mm -hmm. I have written a couple letters to the Chronicle, and they have been published. If people want to um, read those and see exactly um, my thoughts on this, and I do want to say it, the little bit that I might know about Tom processes, the Historical Commission can impose the six-month delay. Um, I think the building inspector probably will issue is the one who does issue a building. Um, a demolition permit. Um, uh, Nonprofit educational and religious institutions are protected under the Dover Amendment and can um, override local zoning. So if the um, no alternative uh, is found for this uh, property and the school does buy it and it is considered protected by town council under the Dover Amendment, it can build. Then it would go to CPDC for site plan review um, where they would present and the t um, community, the neighborhood could um, uh, contribute ideas uh, to the appearance of the building and buffering and things like that. I do not support this. I think there are alternative locations. I think it sounds like a good program, just not here in in um, in the area that many of the community treasure for walking, biking, um, and socialization, all the other things that we like to do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Please, um, you would you mind standing up? Uh, Recording. <laughs> I know it's getting late, but we three live on Temple Street. It is not just the house. There is a lot of property that goes all the way down to the school. The, the property is behind her house, 
and our house, all that extra land they have. I certainly am not going to put up with a business in my backyard. I can hardly stand it. I overlook it when the teenage kids are crawling over the fence when school is in. And don't think they're not going to continue. They will. You know, I, I, I'm, I, I just wanted to say that. It's, you know, uh, there's a lot more involved. People here don't realize they're talking about a house, but there's a whole lot of extra property that goes all the way down to the school also that involves many homes. Those are our backyards. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to share a comment or concern? I had one other letter that came in the mail that I got at first, and I just thought I would read it in so I didn't highlight anything, and then I got more emails and I decided I need to streamline. But I should also read this and put it into the record. I'm just apologizing for not having streamlined it a little bit. Um, it's dated July 17, 2014. Seven years ago, Summer Ave in Reading was featured in Boston Magazine as one of the hub's 65 absolute best streets. The article cited the beautiful historic homes that line the street as one of the primary reasons for this designation. Now the owner of one of the most iconic of these homes intends to demolish. The owner also intends to demolish the attached carriage house, detached carriage house, another historic structure on the property. As noted on the front page of the July 10th Reading Chronicle, the home on 186 Summer Ave has been listed on the National Register of Historic Places for 30 years, and it is one of Reading's more elaborate Italianate houses and is one of the few of that period whose cupola st still survived. This home was highlighted in Atwood End, Reading, Massachusetts, 1694 to 1994, pictorial history, which states that the house was built around 1853 by Robert Kemp, a business owner. The home was part of, a 12, of 12 acres Mr. Kemp had purchased for his gentleman's farming pursuit. The building's many exquisite <coughs> external features may be its unique and irreplaceable home, its beauty and its value to the neighborhood and to the community must not be destroyed. While the house needs to be painted on the outside and the kitchen needs to be updated, the rest of the house is in good condition. The town's property assessment data indicate that the property has received a good plus rating. In addition, there will be substantial negative impact on abutting properties if residential use is not retained at this site. We strongly encourage the Historical Commission to impose a demolition delay to research alternatives to the requested demolition. For instance, the property has not been marketed through any real estate service, including the multiple listing service, to seek a buyer willing to take over the stewardship of this home. We must find a resolution that is fair to all without destroying one of Reading's irreplaceable jewels. All right. Mary Ellen and John O'Neill. Kathy and David Proctor, Glenn and Carol Patterson, Jeremy Eckenroth, Barbara Ralding, Anne and David Godwin, Godwin, <laughs> Mary Ellen and James Castanosis, Lorraine and Bob Salter, Mark and Lisa Warner, Gerard Alston, Pat Lippett, Thomas Weber, Anne and William Sullivan, Tara and James Caberlet. Okay. <laughs> Tom and Marla Claw, Peggy White, Tiffany and Gardner Bradley, Susan and Frank Coco Ludo, Marie and Francis Higgins, Mary Shugby, John and Beverly McAlore, Cheyenne Yi, Bob Drake, Cinda Romer, Joseph Lupi, David Marulo. Timothy O'Neill, 
Jerothy, Jer Jerry and Nancy Lamb, Priscilla Troutman, Suzanne and Chris Stanton, Virginia and Everett Blodgett, Doug Fox, Rod and Becky Petron, Erin Kennedy, Peter and Becky Wolf, Robin and Christopher Cordima, Helen, <laughs> these names, Cor Corloris, I apologize, Venetia Metropolis, John Metropolis, Theo and Linda Metropolis, Stephen Quigley, Robert and Kathleen Corwin, Lisa and Chris Soria, Daisy and Brian Gunta, Frank and Lori Hilliard, Taylor Hilliard. At this time, I, if no one else has anything else to share, all right. <laughs> Once again, Keith Arnold, Three Bond Street. Obviously, everybody here opposes this. And I just want to pull attention to their counsel who wouldn't answer any questions. I feel that this is going to be the way this project goes. You're not going to know until it happens. I, th I think. They're hiding things and they don't want us to know. We are the townspeople, we pay the taxes, we have the right to know. This affects all of us. They don't wanna answer questions, obviously. It's just, I just can't fathom the, this commercial business right in the middle of a beautiful street. Just, if this goes on, just hold on because you're not gonna know anything until it happens. Thank you. This time was not a time for debate. It was just a time to voice questions and comments. I'll ask again. <laughs> um, if, if anyone else has anything. Uh, I'm Margaret Sweeney. I live in King Street. Um, my question is, why was this not brought to the general public just for sale? I don't understand that. That's my question. I, I could go on and on and reiterate what everybody else has said, but I'm not going to. But I am curious why that was not happening in this situation. Okay. All right. At this time, I would like to thank everyone for their contributions, for their questions and comments, and your courtesy. Um, now I would like to ask the commission if they have any questions. If we have any questions, um, I'll start with myself. Um, can I assume that you're choosing the uh, facility in Woburn is a um, rental and that you're not going to be, um, you're going to stop that facility and build another one in Reading that's um, permanent? Or is this in addition to Woburn, <laughs> which is very close by? It's our intention for this facility to replace our Woburn facility. Is it replacing others in the area too, possibly? OK. All right. Um, what are the school hours for these facilities? We're Monday through Friday, um, and uh, eight, thir eight to four thirty. Eight, actually, eight thirty to four thirty, right? Yeah. Eight, eight thirty. Some some stragglers in early and later. Staff, not not children. Okay. Um, for this application, a traffic study was not required, but that question was brought up. So I'm going to ask why there was no traffic study done. I'm going to defer that on to, to council. It, we, uh, let me just put it this way. In, in all of the sites that we've cited, we've never had to do a traffic study. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Let us be respectful of everyone and let them have an opportunity to speak, please. <clears throat> yeah. Um, some of the residents had good comments on this. 
we're, we have to go through a limited site plan review with the, the planning board. When we go to the development review team meeting with the town manager, all the staff, there'll be comments there if they feel a traffic study is warranted or if, if they can even ask for one under limited site plan review. This is not a full site plan review as you see uh, with a new bank in town or Home Depot or Jordan's Furniture. This, this is gonna be a limited site plan review. There's only so much the planning board can look at. It, no. Let's it, listen it, one th person through at the a time, chair. Please. It, it, I, I was up front in the beginning on this. I got hired three weeks ago. I already completed an existing condition survey. I have a base plan generated. I know the architect's been through the house. We all just came on board, Mark and I, three weeks ago. Um, started developing plans. Mark's working on um, diff different layouts now, how things could work. This is only three weeks old to us. We started the demolition delay because we knew it was a historic home. We knew there was a six month process to go through. We wanted to get on board, work with this commission. And like I said, I've worked on other historical homes in town, on other sites, and I, I did the Montessori school on West Street, and when that came up eight years ago, that was a big to do on, even on West Street. It wasn't historic, but it was in a residential neighborhood. And it was one of the this first. Is, if, first if you could please address I'm us. I'm trying to. Okay. Yes. It Thank was you. one of the first nonprofit schools that came into the town of Reading. It was new to the town. The West Street residents had a group as well. It went through a number of meetings, and the town learned a lot about the process as well. That's why I came on board on this one. I, I knew the Montessori School. I've had dealings with the Historical Commission before. And, uh, and I told this group up front, they're going to have to look, to look to put some of the detail if the house does have to come down into the new design. And, and that's what we're here tonight saying. I hope that answers everyone's question. If we do not have to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals, we will be for the, be before the Planning Board. And we will have an informal meeting. You'll be notified, and, and we'll gladly try to. T I, I know you're all against it, but if, if, if it's something that's allowed by right, we'll try to work with you on, on the project. I know no one's happy about it tonight, but we will <coughs> informally meet with you. And as far as a lot of de developers, that would not even take place. It would just go by right, and they go right to the planning board. Thank you. Um, do you have any questions? Okay. Yes. Please. Yes, absolutely. I, I would want to at least just ask a follow-up question to, sure. to you, sir. Um, yeah. You mentioned that your understanding is that the obligation um, with respect to the town's zoning bylaws would be to go forward with a limited site plan review. Can you just explain for me why, and I know you've done um, other projects and other business before the CBDC, right. why right. your understanding is that it's limited site plan review as compared to full site plan review? Um, through various contact with the town planner, um, the town planner requested documentation from this group to see if they do qualify under the Dover Amendment. That's going to town council to review. I'm not sure if a decision has been made on that. If a decision is made that they fall under the Dover Amendment, that if the, the, it is a nonprofit, it meets all the criteria, then under, under the site plan review, it would be deemed limited site plan review. And that was from the town planner. I'm just reiterating what, what Gene Delio said. Not that I know. I don't, I, I'm just sorry. I, I don't know if that decision's been made or if town council has got back to, to my client. I'm, I'm not sure on that. Thank you. Yeah. Do you have Robin or? Okay. Um, do you, is this a board or one? Okay. Yeah. I guess my question for all of you is, given that there's so much opposition and so much concern about this site, why are you so committed to it? Uh, we're committed to finding a home to serve our students, our children, and their families. And, you know, as I said previously, we've looked for five years to find a suitable site unsuccessfully. This is not uh, a one-off, you know, mm -hmm. we, we just took the first opportunity, first uh, opportunity that came down the line. You know, we have literally 
begun and stopped different searches o multiple times over five years. Uh, and this is the first successful uh, situation where we found enough you know, land that could be modified with existing structures and so on uh, to accommodate our use. It's really just that simple. of your consultants have stated that they've only started the development of this project three weeks. Did you ever consider the fact that you have gotten off on the wrong foot by the first thing you did with the town was to ask for a uh, demolition delay without producing any drawings? You state that you want to keep some of the architectural details. Maybe it would have been a good step to make that effort first <coughs> and come before this board and other boards in the town and the neighbors to really show an intention that you did, you do plan to really look into alternatives to the demolition delay instead of starting with the demolition of the building? We, we have to respond mm -hmm. to the local bylaws and zoning procedures that are in mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. And um, following the review of the mm -hmm. property, the impression was that all or a portion of the building with buildings would have to suffer some demolition mm -hmm. and as a consequence looking at your process this is how we have to get started and the limited scope of review here we know is relative to whether the building has historical significance we've wandered from that greatly tonight and understandably so mm -hmm. and 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 that's mm -hmm. some of the reason why we haven't necessarily responded at length here because we know the process that's yet to come is going to be very informative, very engaged, and it's fine not to trust us at this point. We will prove ourselves to you, as the doctor has said, relative to how we engage communities relative to this kind of a proposal. That's not a guarantee that we can save the building, but you will see good faith in the negotiations and the discussions that will be forthcoming relative to this. So we have to respond to your process and your process mm -hmm. says if you think you have to destroy all or part of the building and it has historical mm -hmm. significance you need to begin that process and you will suffer a six month um, demolition delay during which time mm -hmm. we can use that to to try and engage the community on it but it's your process that gets us started. Yes, and of course, oftentimes what's part of this process is that you do submit drawings for what is proposed. Yeah. It may mm -hmm. be it's not required, mm -hmm. and what is re what is suggested <laughs> is that what is suggested mm -hmm. is that and uh, look I've been in these hearings. Yeah. It, it, what mm -hmm. is suggested mm -hmm. is that we need to tell you what has to be done here mm -hmm. in terms of our belief that it that it requires um, some or all demolition. And as I said at the beginning of this, and that wasn't some trick to say let's get the clock running. We looked at it. Mm -hmm. It's pretty clear to us there's a reason why we didn't try to bring any information to you that said this is not of historical mm -hmm. significance. Your presentation, other presentations, mm -hmm. the letter. Mm -hmm. We understand it. And so we want to get that process going and we want to get underway with you to, to try and act on this. So that's, that's why we're underway today. And I, I understand it feels like we're off on the long foot, but I'm not sure there's any other way for us to get off uh, and running on this other than to <coughs> present what your bylaw requires us to present, which is a demolition permit. Okay. Shirley, I have mm -hmm. a question. Okay. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think it was uh, well put. You know, mm -hmm. I've been in this field for 40 years. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm proud of that fact. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to engage in any activity that's disingenuous and, and ruin a reputation that I'm very proud of and, 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 and tarnish. Uh, what I believe has been a very positive experience uh, um, over all those years. As I, I think uh, John put it well, you know, um, we're not asking you to trust us at this point. We're going to come in with uh, drawings. You're going to see those drawings. Uh, we'll talk about them. Uh, uh, you know, obviously what we want to do is end up with something that we can all respect, that's viable, that can be, be done uh, practically, and, and preserves tradition and history to the, to the extent reasonable and practical that that's that's what we hope to do um, you know um, looking forward to that process I look forward to being able to convince people that you know if we were talking about a doctor's office or a dentist's office you probably wouldn't have the same level of concern 
but those are the appearances that we hope to project in this neighborhood. And so there, there, there I think, lies our main point. We hope okay. to sway minds uh, that can be reasonable about the project and, and recognize there are certain rights in play, both uh, the owners and uh, us as a, a future community service, much needed in this community to find a home. Thank you. Okay. Ron? Mm -hmm. it, uh, <coughs> it seems that the uh, community, the neighborhood, and the uh, historical commission is behind the power curve. The uh, conversation tonight centers on two points. One of them is the historical value of that structure and what criterion might do once they acquire it. There's a third leg to the argument, and that's at what level and to what extent is the current real owner willing to interact with the community, the neighborhood, and the historical commission <coughs> to find alternative, more appropriate uses in our collective opinion? Now, that's a question I'd like to ask Deborah. I'm not sure whether you want to answer it or defer it to criterion, which makes it a little awkward. You know, at the, at the end of the day, at the end of this hearing, or whenever the, the, the historical commission makes up, makes up their mind as to what to do, it, it's possible we're looking forward to open dialogue with you as the previous or the current owner in order to seek more appropriate use for that structure. Yeah. Are you willing to do that? Yeah, so the question is, would you, are you willing to back up the step and help us to get with you in the power curve? as opposed to behind it. Say no. I don't understand the question. The question is, are you willing to open up dialogue to help the community, the historical commission and the neighborhood to find a more appropriate use in their opinion for that historic structure? And the answer is, are you willing? Yes or no? Or maybe. I don't, I don't understand how you think I can back out of a legal and binding contract without being approved. Okay. I think that's. <laughs> are you all set? Okay. I think we. All right. We have our answer. Okay. Um, Sally. Um, I was just wondering. It's feeling a little bit to me, which may or may not be accurate. So you guys have been thrown under the bus in terms of the question. Did you know it was an open, not an open market, or did you know that you were the only ones that had been approached when you found this? That this property had not been. Refuse to answer. I, I, honestly, I'm not sure of the relevance. To be honest with you, I, I understand the relevance. Well, no legal relevance. I, I, in terms of your hearing, that's. I, I don't mean to be. I, I certainly don't mean to be rude. But what I'm saying to you is that's completely irrelevant to the process that we have before you tonight. It may not be irrelevant to the general public's opinion as to how this should proceed, but these are private property rights. As much as you are here to protect your private property rights, these are her private property rights. And she doesn't have an obligation to put anything out on the open market, so there's no legal relevance to us as to whether it went out to the, to the, to the market, and I'm not sure that there's any legal relevance to it tonight in terms of the hearing, and, and that's all I can say to you. It, okay. it doesn't, it doesn't. As the daughter of a lawyer and a historian and a teacher, I hear you. <coughs> what I was asking it for was primarily, we need consensus, and we need to find a place of compromise that's going to make this palatable for the town. And so that sounded exceedingly evasive. It may not have been. Couldn't have been more direct. I don't uh, legally, I but I'm right. wondering yeah. whether there's a compromise place. Of course, yeah. please. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously as a nonprofit, I personally am responsible for, for making fiduciarily wise decisions with the assets of the organization. I believe that we agreed to a purchase and sale, which is a fair and appropriate price given real estate values in this area. Thank you. Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, just to, to follow up, um, and, and I would appreciate asking you uh, the, the nature of the current conversation. Um, I, I think you're correct. I know um, surprisingly little um, since I haven't yet been appointed uh, to the to the commission yet. But I um, I know enough to yeah, I think we all know enough to understand that, that we are um, all behind that power curve um, except for you folks, um, and we're desperately trying to figure out ways to uh, see if we can equalize the the table here. I you don't have to, and we understand that, and it's just. Ironic that on the one hand we're hearing, or, or the folks here are hearing, 
uh, that they should trust you, but on the other hand, every other statement is we don't have to do this and we don't have to do that, and that's the, that's the legal dilemma because the truth is you don't. But to that point, um, and given the fact that, as we've all talked about, the, the essence here is whether or not um, this is, is or is not detrimental to uh, the purposes of the bylaw to demolish this property. It's pretty evident to me that, that, that it is. Um, but, but since we are all trying to educate not just ourselves but the folks here in the town of Reading, um, it's important, I think, to understand what the next process is, particularly given <coughs> what you're saying in terms of what you do or don't have to do. Um, there is a probability that the demolition will be delayed for six months and no longer. I don't know when the purchase and sale uh, will conclude with a closure, and I don't know when you plan to proceed with your design and your limited site plan review or full site plan review, but I am eagerly inquisitive about when you intend to pursue whatever that process is um, before the CPDC, because it's clear that if the town, if town council does determine that you are exempt from full site plan review, uh, then you will simply go with the limited site plan review. Either way, uh, you have the right to develop the property and you have the right to go forward. So the question for me is, this commission is possibly seeking to delay that process of demolition and engage you in a process of conversation about what other alternatives you might pursue. In order to, and you're saying you're willing to do that. And in order to do that, we probably will need to see, and the town will need to see, those designs and have that follow-up conversation sooner, since we only have six months rather than later. Do you know and will you commit to following up on whatever that next step is as soon as possible and in fact before the six month period expires and as much before it expires so that we have the, the opportunity to do that with full knowledge of what you intend to do. Do you understand my question? Yes, and the answer is yes. So you commit to follow up as quickly the, the as possible. The bylaw is very clear about the intent of what's to take place during the six month period and we intend to honor the, the not just the legal ob obligations of that to the being an attorney but the spirit of that. So we intend to be in here. I, I understand the anxiety because it's the unknown right now, um, and and even the known is 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 creating anxiety as to the property values and all the other things we've heard about right. here tonight. We can't. We, we this is a process, and it's a process we intend to engage in good faith. We intend to engage it promptly. I can't tell you exactly when that will be, but your bio, we're not going to be in here at five you know five months and three weeks. You know, it's going to be as soon as we can possibly get in here with plans that, that are reasonable that we can stand behind. Right. Um, we're going to be in here talking with you about those plans. And I can assure you that, you know, we've, I've worked with this architect many times before, uh, very creative, and to the extent um, we can match up opportunity to, um, to work with the, the structures that are out there um, within the financial constraints of the project development and maybe some flexibility in the financial constraints of the project development, we're going to do that. I mean, that's the commitment they've made, and, and I have no problem telling you that publicly, and we're going to be before you um, as your bylaw asked us to be. The simple answer was the first one, yes. And I opened this presentation two hours ago to make it clear to you we were not here to say this building has no historical significance. Right. It, we, we understand it does, and we're prepared to work with you as your bylaw provides, we should. But with, and I, I appreciate that, but with all due respect, your, your legal obligation, as you well know, to present your design and the plans which are going to legally, to which you will legally be bound before the CPDC or before the CPDC, not before the Historical Commission. When do you plan to file before the CPDC so that you will be obligated with respect to designs? Jack's got a better handle on that. Thank you. <clears throat> the first step is to go to the development review team. Um, I just did a project for Dr. Ravens, a dentist in town. He want, he's looking to expand his business. We didn't go to DRT because he has a contractor in place. The planning board wasn't too happy with that decision because they like the department staff to give recommendations right. before CPDC <laughs> gets it. So our first step would be to go to a DRT meeting. 
then we would probably have an informal meeting with the neighbors, then file with CPDC. Because what I would like to do is when I go into CPDC, say, say we had the DRT meeting, there's notes that are provided to CPDC. We'll have notes from the informal meeting with the neighborhood. And then once we get notes, we'll, we'll need four or five weeks to in right. incorporate those notes into the design. So bottom line, within three weeks, I developed an existing condition survey plan. Mark's going to need some time on his end. We're probably six to eight weeks out from having a meeting with DRT. Right. Then we would follow up with an informal meeting with the, with, with, with the neighborhood group. Then Right. And, and work with that, work with you months. and come to CPDC. Our intention within the six months is to be before CPDC. Okay, so that, those that, those three steps. That's is what our I'm trying intention. to clarify. Because I, I have a project schedule that Mr. Littleton held me to on this, and it was it was intense. It's over a summer workload, and within two weeks, I developed the plan. I've done a lot of work in town. I always meet my schedules. Okay. Um, and that's our intention. We're not, we're not looking to mm -hmm. wait out the six months, no. and then go to CPDC and say, well, the building's down now, good luck. Okay. In other projects in town, that has happened. But no, that I, is not our intention. And I appreciate that. I'm just, you, could, you can see there's a, there's a fair amount of concern. And, I do. And, and interest. Let me I do. Phrase that, interest. And, and I'm just trying to, to be able to put the pieces of the puzzle together. You all don't yet even own this property. I don't know when that's going to take place. It may be next week. It may be next month. It may be two months from now. We don't know. <laughs> So I'm concerned that this six-month clock will start to tick fairly immediately. So I have some concerns, regardless of your intentions, and I can appreciate my, your sincerity. I'm being upfront with you, that that's a process. It, okay. it wouldn't be go straight to CPDC. In to the development of the DRT, the informal meeting, we'll still be working with this group, um, trying to work through it. But that's the intention. I've had other developers come in. They submit the application. They don't even show up for hearings, and they just wait out the six months. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it used to be a 12-month delay, and it was taken to town meeting for six months. Right. I know Virginia very well because I've been involved in those. I, I'm the bridal shop up on Main Street. I, you know, I, I, they just waited it out. I, I, and when the, this group came to me, I said, you're going to be in front. This is a, a nice street in town. I've done a lot of work for these residents on the street. And I came on board because I said, if they're going to have an engineer, I know the town. I and, and, and work with it. But that's our intention. Within the six okay. months, we'll be in front of all the boards. Thank you. Thank you. Virginia. I had a, uh, just a, I wanted to reiterate the part of the uh, demolition delay bylaw that says the responsibilities of the owner if the demolition delay is imposed. And the owner shall be responsible for participating in the investigation of options to demolition by actively pursuing alternatives with the commission and any interested parties, providing any necessary information, allowing reasonable access to the property, and securing the premises. So I hope that um, makes it clear to the public that um, the uh, owner is responsible for interaction with the commission. And, and Madam Chairman, that's what I was referring to in terms of the bylaw, and we understand mm -hmm. what the bylaw calls for. Um, so we've already had the public comment. I'm sorry. These are questions. I mean, what are the financial considerations that will have to be open to the uh, commission? We don't know who owns it. Yeah, we can't no. take any more public comment. Yeah. That we, we, can't, the we can't take any more public comment. Madam Chair, can I ask why? I mean, did uh, the doctor get up there and talk about we, his fiduciary responsibility? I'd like we to hear have, more about that. We have, I, I asked many times if anyone had anything right, else to say. At this point, a fiduciary well, we, we, and I think we have a right as citizens and property owners to ask him questions about that. We are here to try to uphold the demolition delay bylaw. Totally there will be other opportunities where the Madam public can Virginia make comments. Said, she's just read out the bylaw, which is perfectly clear, and it specifies that the owner has to make clear that there are financial, whatever the arrangements are, certain information is due to the road commission. Now, everyone, when they signed in, should have seen on the top of the sheet who the owner was. 
it's, it's and it was it, also in the public notice. It's irrelevant yes. uh, for now because but, we have to go ahead with the. Uh, Madam Chair, right. we have new information now that the doctor just got up. Virginia, please. He just got up and said he has a fiduciary responsibility. And I'd like to know what that fiduciary responsibility is. You're trying to tell me that there's no property in Wilmington, Wilmington or any place that is cheaper or better uh, benefit to him? Under what that, the, I think it's a legitimate question. It, whether I agree or not, doesn't matter. What I have to do here is to uphold the bylaw. And, and that. Can you call the meeting to a close and can we continue talking if they want to work with the community? I think that's a totally fair request. Madam well, yeah, Chairman, sure. I, I just. I, I don't want to see things continue like this. Where yeah, yeah, some yeah, things, yeah. Some things yeah. are hanging. This, excuse me, if you. The question was took as an to agenda. a fiduciary responsibility, this is the what section. he meant. As an officer of a nonprofit corporation, he has a fiduciary responsibility to his corporation. That's what he meant. Okay, thank you. All right. Madam Chair, well, may I ask a question about the uh, I am, demo delay I'm, um, article thing itself? The demo so delay about, is so published the on the website. Can I just ask you a question, though, about it? Because mm -hmm. I don't really know the answer. Is that does it um, permit transfer of ownership during the delay? Yes. I believe it does cover that. Exactly where it is, I do not have off the top of my the head. <coughs> I, I don't have that exact answer off the top of my head. This is a new bylaw that the town put into play uh, just over a year ago. And this is one of the first times we have used this particular bylaw. <coughs> it is available on the internet. I will try to look that up later, but I apologize. I don't. Um, okay. All right. And at, at this point, um, you've all been heard as much as the town will allow us, and I'm going to motion that we close the hearing. Okay. Um, now. I move that presented information is insufficient to make a final determination oh, yeah, on, the on the requested demolition of the structure at 186 Summer Ave and that the public meeting be continued within 21 days. Now we need to pick a date. No, we no. have to decide amongst ourselves what's the best date because Did of our. Be part of the motion? We have to set it. <coughs> mm -hmm. But um, if it's seconded, we can discuss the motion. Mm -hmm. oh, so I second. Right. You second. Robin seconds second. the motion? I second that we. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, Carl? Take it off mute. No. Yes. Hi. Do you have any comments? This is that you want to get in? Um, no, I think many have been made. Okay. Uh, All right. Go ahead. Okay. Um, and we're going to discuss a date mm -hmm. for a continuation. For a continuation. It's three weeks. Really, August fourteenth. That's what I'm going to do. I think the. What do you guys. The problem is that we do it. The last thing we do it. You don't have any room. Yeah. That's everybody's fault. We do it in two weeks. We do have time. <coughs> <coughs> You can speak out loud. I can speak out loud. Can we take out August 5th The August 5th meeting is something at 7, 8, and 9. That's right. The 7th? The 7th? You're going. 
and you don't the know only, if you could the do it The only weird sneeze to that is that I have jury duty. I'll be sick. I have absolutely no will happen. But we'll have to ask to make sure that we have um, <coughs> them. Um, they are being um, interviewed okay. uh, soon, but I think how soon did you say that they would be? Uh -huh. <coughs> Interview for us is next Tuesday. Okay. Oh, it is. Next okay, Tuesday. great. All and right. then the 29th. The 29th. Okay. But just so you know, I'm on vacation and out of the state from the 30th to the 9th. Okay. I mean, you need to reach me by phone. Yep. Um, and after the interview, then the selectmen have to um, appoint you, and then mm -hmm. you need to be mm -hmm. sworn in. So when I think the next selectman meeting is the nineteenth. He talked. Didn't he talk that he they would appoint them the night that they heard? Didn't he, that email? That come first through? email. Yeah, appointments effective the twenty second. But I don't know. I don't have it. Nobody said anything to me when I called Claudia. I think that, not Claudia. Whatever the administrative assistant is. For yeah. Uh, she mentioned. Well, no, it was before Paula. There was somebody okay. else in the letter, um, and she mentioned she wasn't even certain. Um, whether, because we, I was being, I don't know what uh, what he's interested in as yeah. an associate, but um, yeah. we may not even need to go through that process as an associate. I'm just not sure. So somebody okay. may want to touch base with Bob. Yeah. Um, what, what, what advantage is there to um, continue? Excuse me? Yes. Um, right, yes. We are discussing a date so that we can finish this motion. Yep. Yes, it is on I know. television. Remember all that. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, we have uh, three members here and one on the telephone that has heard everything. Yes. I don't think there'll be any more new uh, material to, to before making a decision. So the only advantage to having um, the a continuance, it wouldn't be to allow for the public input anymore. Uh, we've heard that. So a continuance would delay the bylaw by just a short three weeks or something. Is that worth it? I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Well, somebody asked a question about the dual representation. Okay. Somebody asked a question about the transfer of ownership, what that does to the six months. I, I would like well, to Well, town know. council will have to help us I think, with that. I, think I would like to know. I also thought that when you apply for a building demolition permit as part of a building permit, that you have to have plans and elevations of what you propose to do for something like this. This is not just a tear You better speak up so the public can yeah. hear you. Okay. Oh, I have to? Yes. <laughs> They're not listening, but... <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, if I don't have they should be called so we can conduct business or else they can leave. If you wouldn't mind, if if you could be quiet or move out in the other room yeah. so that we can hear as we're trying to discuss this. Thank you. You can listen to us discuss this too if you want. <laughs> it's public. It's public. We're talking about... Uh, okay. So we have to know property transfer this um, mm -hmm. demo delay. How critical is that for making a de determination tonight? That's critical to you? We've got to speak up so everyone can hear okay. at a public, okay. a public yeah. meeting. My concern is that if we close, if we can. Continue. Continue. Then we're not only prolonging a little bit, but if we close now and impose the delay, then that allows them the leeway to do whatever they're going to pursue next, meaning the neighborhood, right? That's what they said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And otherwise, we're just leaving them in limbo. It seems to me that there's a valid argument of the one against yeah. the many, and the many do have a lot of rights here. And if we hold it, then we're holding yeah. all of them in limbo. In a continuation, there wouldn't be um, room for public input. I could get this gentleman's name and um, get him that information on the demolition delay. What other questions were there? Question about the transfer of property during the demolition. Right. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Your question about whether or not. Have dual. <coughs> I mean, we have the owner. The owner's representative. Yeah, it's owner yeah, applicant. Yeah, so. Applicant. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, 
Um. Well, and, and I would add too, Robin, mm -hmm. I think you had suggested, and I had wanted to ask, um, the bylaw suggests as you... Um, yes. Could you have the uh, members of the board speak up louder? We're having oh. trouble with the audio on television. Okay. Yes, sure. please. Okay. The bylaw does require that the, the owner, the applicant, submit a description of the use and my question would be how much detail does that do, does the commission require or what does that mean has to be provided to us because one interpretation could be that it would have to be some detailed plans yes um, the permit was considered to be complete by the um, planning department okay so, so that and, question's and been asked and answered yeah it, it, it would, we usually get more detail, yeah. mm -hmm. absolutely. But are they required to? Um, it's an interpretation. It's an interpretation. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And no, nonetheless, even if they presented detailed plans to the Historical Commission, this is my concern, their legal obligation with respect to any detailed plans is not to us ultimately, but to the CPDC. So um, in a sense, it's kind of a moot point, which is why I go back to Virginia's comment that technically the real decision here um, in terms of the bylaw is whether an, is a determination whether or not demolition is detrimental to the purposes of the bylaw. And I'm not sure that we, how much of that, we may need it or want it for other purposes, for public information, but I'm not so sure that for purposes of the bylaw, whether or not this demolition is detrimental um, in terms of the purpose of the bylaw. I'm not sure this commission necessarily needs any more to decide that. Might be worth doing if we could buy a lot more time, but we can't even do that. Well, the problem is scheduling everyone to right. it in yeah. the summer, mm -hmm. and um, because we don't have um, full membership, um, it's been a little tricky to, uh, we're obliged to work within so many days of all the um, applications and all, so mm -hmm. I don't know whether we can juggle um, for a continuation or not. Mm -hmm. But to be clear, the public would not have any more say in right. the continuation. Right. Mm -hmm. They can attend meetings, but there would be no more public input. Meetings are open. So if we were determined to, to close the hearing and impose the delay, we would then need to withdraw the motion we just did to continue it? Yes. Yes. Can we do that? Uh, what is the language we would use for that? And yeah, the proponent of the motion could offer to withdraw it and then um, and the seconder would agree, and then you can vote to um, withdraw it. Because we haven't voted on it. No, no we haven't voted on no. it. No. 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 They could vote to withdraw it, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm, I mean, since we haven't voted, I would just, yeah. I'm just going back to my, my <laughs> prior history. I don't see any reason well, I, why if, if the mover withdraws and the seconder withdraws, then it's never somebody happened. could simply move that the information is insufficient and continue it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Does Carl have anything mm -hmm. that he wants to But if you do that, you better come up with a date within 20 Do you have days. an opinion, Carl? Off mute. I'm off mute. Okay. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the, I'm fuzzy on the, we um, continue the hearing with that, who's got what kind of wiggle room there versus just imposing a, a delay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we have to do it within 21 days and we have to have the four members. I mean, if it's, I know, I think I have enough information to make a decision, but if other members mm -hmm. of the commission feel they don't. Mm. Any and, them. and if we can, if, I mean, are the mm -hmm. issues that are mm -hmm. outstanding kind of impactful of whether or not this is going to, a demolition would impact the community? Mm -hmm. No. No. I think that's clear. I mean, I, I think we, we got a good, a good representation of the community mm -hmm. in yep. their opinion. Mm-hmm. I'll withdraw. Okay. okay. I just okay. didn't know if this would give them a, a chance to sort of show some good faith to come forth with some designs, a little bit more. But if it, it's not part of the bylaw, mm -hmm. I'm sure in good faith they, they will be coming forward. Well, I just had some questions too about the timing. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Someone had mentioned that uh, they weren't going to come to us until they were close to the CPDC. And by, your, by their own schedule, you're not going to CPDC for three months. Three months of the six months then are gone. So would you be willing to come to us before you go to DIT, the Wait. design review? Would you be willing to come to us Madam soon Chairman, and the public soon? Yep. I thought you were through with the question. Yep. Madam Chairman, when you close the hearing mm -hmm. and vote the demolition de delay, the first mm -hmm. thing we'd like to do is schedule a walkthrough for the commission. Mm -hmm. And um, then at that walkthrough, we could mm -hmm. schedule a meeting from there mm -hmm. uh, to talk about the design plans we have at that point. Mm -hmm. That's the way mm -hmm. we'd like to handle it, if mm -hmm. that's okay. Mm -hmm. So we can schedule that walk as soon as, as commission okay. members would be available mm -hmm. to do that. Okay. Withdraw the motion. Okay. Um, say, say it verbally so it will be yes. on the record. Mm -hmm. I would like to withdraw the motion that the presented in some information is insufficient to make a final determination on the requested demolition of the structure at 186 Summer Ave and that the public hearing be continued. I'm withdrawing that so it will not be continued. And as I second it, I am required to also withdraw. Okay. So I will now move that the presented information is sufficient to make a final determination on the requested demolition of the structure at 186 Summer Ave and that the public hearing be closed. Sally seconds. All in favor? I'm going to have to do a roll call. Okay, Robin? I'm in favor of closing. In. Sally? I'm in favor of closing the hearing. Charlene, I'm in favor. Carl? I'm in favor. All right, that's 4 0 in favor. What do we have to do? So. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you for participating. The public hearing is now closed. The RHC will notify the building inspector of this decision on whether or not <coughs> uh, on, to impose the demolition delay on the property. Well, we did vote. You have to vote but on the hearing. Vote to close, close the hearing. hearing, right. Okay. So it's this one. Um, we move that the loss of the structure at 186 Summer Ave be detrimental to the town under the purposes of the bylaw. Two with 7.2.1. And that a demolition delay of up to six months be imposed beginning on this date, the 24th of July, 2014. All in favor? Robin? I'm in favor. Sally? I'm in favor. Charlene? I'm in favor. Carl? I'm in favor. All right. 4-0. Uh, um, the vote was 4-0 to zero in the affirmative. Then the motion shall be judged as a positive vote and the structure is protected by the bylaw. And the building inspector may not issue a permit to demolish said structure until six months has elapsed or the RHC votes to release the delay. So that's it? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much for your participation. Appreciate it. Thank you, Carl. Have a good night, enjoy your family on vacation. Thank you. Good questions. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your assistance and Thank you. Following the procedure. It's my job. <laughs> you did it very well. A volunteer job. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you, uh, yes, yes. Um, you can be in touch with me. Via email, yes. Um, through the historic, on the website, for the historical commission, if you send an email there, it'll come to me and come to other members. Okay. And we will get back. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
<laughs> Good to see you, Mary Ellen. Hey, Mary Ellen. <laughs> Well, yeah, I know, you know, it was interesting, and I saw uh, But saw it was good that we got coming. Yeah. But it was good, it was good to see you. Were there other people out of town meeting with us? Yes, okay. <laughs> if by the time this process is done, I mean, there, there may be at least Andrew. some time meeting with us who might be persuaded of a different effect. Yes, yes, that's right.